Because I hate this country. I love this country. Cohabitation situation. Good morning, Saturday, November 2nd, 2013. Bring fan upstairs. I'm a big fan of this stout shout. I'm a fan of this stout shout. If you try to smoke me out, I'll blow you. I'll blow this right up your snout. <laughs> In case you. <coughs> In case your face holds out doubt, tobacco smoke makes me choke, can make me choke. Marijuana is kind fauna. I can work as hard as I want to. I am no slow prima donna because I am a single man. Others claim to control my plan. I might just be an also ran. Just try what? To be hipper than? Someone else who claims that they can live your life and control your clan needs to be ignored much more than a board. Then, the, then they'll just get bored. Memories are stored. Let the stories be told before they get too old. I've got my own life. You've got your own strife. Save that mindless, save that, save that mind messing as a, Save that mind messing as a self blessing. Just do your own things. Uh, we and we will be God, and we will all be kings. When we live the lot, when we live the joy love brings, then we fly with eagles' wings. all remembering Dr. Martin Luther King in the name of love. A moment of silence. Take a little more time. Possible pairings, say that of a seamstress with a rhinoceros. <laughs> He'd been contemplating sending his diet into arrears with a plate of ductile feet when her red dress swam into the park Yo. like a conflagration. Huh? His blood sang at the okay. and he looked at the mallards for moral support, except the heart? indiscretion of his culinary lines had immediately sent them to the so, in the hope of arresting her charms, he made like the strangest, most exotic tree in the fruitful behold, curving his spine, or dotic, and entwining one leg around his leg like a ficus or strangler thing. She proceeded to sit Indian style at his feet and produced a sketchbook and pencil from her eco-friendly canvas bag. He set about capturing his likeness in a blurred frenzy of strokes. It was midsummer, 
and the sun was a screaming red skillet. His body's prodigious ventilation system broke out the waterworks. He squinted past the Victoria Falls, his fursuit eyebrows had become to catch a glimpse of her efforts. To his piping disapproval, she'd not drawn him or anything resembling the alien botanical specimen he'd hoped to impersonate. Instead, she'd drawn a fish, to be more precise, a carp, whiskers and all. So true was her drawing to form, there was even a ripple running along the tail of it as her hypothetical fish negotiated particularly <coughs> well the current. He grew madly indignant. Then something terrifying happened. He began to lose command of his motor functions. He could no longer snap out of this ridiculous posture to voice his outrage at this enchantress he'd gone to such lengths to entice. As this Grand Guignol barreled its course, he noticed her face grew ever smaller and her dark brown hair had sprouted pigtails. Her flowing red dress began to shrink and eventually became a pinafore. Before he knew it, his body went limp and he felt the wind pour through him as water through a stream. His limbs grew fused to his body, and the dyes and fabric of his English tailored orange suit spilled into the sinewy breeze. Were soon absorbed by his form, which was no longer flat Cornelius suckling the third, but an orange carp. Even his mouth proceeded assiduously to suck in air. He felt he was drowning, but instead witnessed his body rise weightless above the profuse green of the park. The young brunette was now a small child holding the nylon string that controlled his every movement. He flapped drunkenly to and fro in the thermals as she concurrently tugged and fed the line. If there was one last creed of crewer, he could utter to this cunning lass as he climbed the sky of her whim. It'd be in Latin, though he doubted she'd understand, let alone hear him through the roaring of the wind. This next poem is um, Days of Dreaming Glass. Windows deceive us into looking. What we see is not what we think we see. Eye betrays the eye on these littlest days of sun. Parallax inflections ignite the objects. A fusillade of wings hijacks perspective. Impressions of the former life scar the retina. The day spools its radiance and traces the anilema. Vascular ode of imbricating leaves, slumbering mass where birds and shadows lay hide and seek among the helical rays of sunlight. The face you thought your own was vanishing with the season. In this frame, your new life begins. This next one is um, inspired after Anselm Kiefer's work. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he is a, he's a German leader and uh, he borrows, his subject borrows a lot uh, from the Holocaust. And uh, they're, they're really amazing um, pieces that, that, that uh, I recommend. If you haven't seen his work, it's Let's greet the cosmology. Shrapnel, the measure of his gaze. The exploding world, the tabernacle human <coughs> in our hearts. The gutted horizon yawning with constellations. Behind this attic door, a scorched forest resides. Each branch dendritic in its reach. A 
library of paginated metal that mirrors the secret life of stars. The shellac seen a roiling nebula of black smoke, air, rust, and debris flung across the sheared dioxide. A closed eyelid ignites into vision and makes us prefer the blindness of seers. Basically, it goes. You'll you'll figure out the the scheme as it goes. The first and third lines are repeated in the in, in the next two sets, and in, in the final um, they end of the stanza together. Ocean Beach Power Ballad. The champagne ocean crashing its waves. We walk along the beach against this tidal urge to repair our lives. In today's stratospheric blue, an exodus, an exodus of footprints in the sand guiding our slow steps. The champagne ocean crap churns its sorrows. It would seem we've been here before. Sandpipers vigilantly, diligently ushering the surf. Against this tidal disrepair, the moon's ghostly twin offers a rejoinder to summer's last hurrah. The champagne ocean smashes its symbols. Frisbees, soccer balls, and kites train the season's provisional orbits to levity. The champagne ocean crashing its waves against this tidal urge to repair our lives. Uh, this next one is from Dhamma. The apocalypse won't come in the manner of poor equestrian enthusiasts who favor spandex over riding breaches and in bad need of breath savers. Or by way of a corporate barbecue set forth in Revelations. It will come on a Sunday morning courtesy of a woman whose hair is a silhouette dance of Medusa's preaching in downtown from an unmarked pulpit. The motley congregation assembled in the square seems to profess she is right by default, as pigeons are the only infidels in attendance, and the occasional nod of consent bumps a naysaying fly off its halo trajectory. <laughs> Fire and brimstone are not just metaphors, she assures this helpless coalition of the not quite willing and eternally oblivious. Never mind that the infernal machinery of the 20th century has been vanquished. Never mind what the sky, cream clouded and blue as a rapture of waves this morning, is trying to say. In praise of radiance. I walked out the back door into tomorrow. Dead pigs are smiling in the sun. Stars are dying on my tongue. I need a kaleidoscope to lift the day into its proper key. The lexicon of lust that pings in the garden with each harvest bloom and mercenary bee is a form of hope. The way the season's gilded invitation of leaves anatomizes flow on the xylem's dark continent with radiance. The everything that calls and echoes in the intimate latitudes of distance, an ur language whose code is silence. On market and seconds, gateway to the sun, every body hallowed in the solstice of emergence. The actual slaking 
every sidewalk cried. Spin, O oh Catherine Wheel, Breath's mandala, Pigs desperados of the hidden field, Deliver us all to Spotsfer's luminous edge, Our sanguine tribu tributaries igniting, In the cosmic memory of tears. Ghost recital. In the Astro Glass Palace, a conference of ghosts is monitoring Earth's long, slow progression of life forms, winding back to the Cambrian. Their mouths can only form vaporous sighs so pretty, the pain soon grew a body, and they're all saddled in a nebula of Planets dirge dirigible, sails over a white castle in Dubai, an oil pipeline in Alaska, a large hadron collider in Geneva, and a bomb wired with hope in Islamabad. Somewhere, a sunroom where a dust mode is having an existential crisis with light. In the back of beyond, a mind troop reenacts the Magna Carta over a locust choir of Geiger counters, worrying despotically about the ruins along the river. The only river will lead you back through miles of cloud forest to the lullaby she quietly sings in the sweet, lonely breath of the night. <laughs> Nowhere is also a place Very often when I listen to the list of my previous jobs, I wonder if I exist. <laughs> <laughs> a murmur of clouds and I'm all wind. <clears throat> Newly crowned king of scatter in the yard, playing three clicks south of the house speaker's lawn, which is plush green as his wallet and immaculately tended, though he's odious as a PB and onion sandwich. A sprinter at dawn will be a marathon runner by dusk at the kind of prophecy we can count on. A trace of civet reminds me of an intangible wound. The girl in glasses and heliotrope colored undies who belt out French pop songs in the kitchen. There it is, another fib masking in the form of hope. Because nowhere is also a place, and zero is the numerical equivalent of now. Some days my driveway looks like it's waiting for the space shuttle to land. <coughs> Where we are, a theoretical topology of touch. In physics, a particle has been known to tunnel through mountains. It can be argued that sleep is a form of deep sea divination where the brain blooms like coral, breathing a pleasant derangement where anemones are blowing and tomorrow's radiant breeze. So uh, we have uh, three cats, and uh, this is a poem I wrote for one of the cats, Tuzik. Uh, He's a magnificent beast, Phobos uh, Dode. Sumatra is light years away. One moment the oceans of blue beasts taking the horizon and this poem hostage until my cat is leaping over fences, roofs, power lines, trees, to land firmly on the bookcase where he wears the sky like a halo. His magnificent striped tail swishes against the potted palm fronds, accessorizing Darwin's great theory, a jungle inferred by his claws. All this would have wept. In midnight's hemisphere of the glass holding his reflection, a river village trembles as his life form prowls the waves. This poem is how meaning is trophied, how the hunter's creed can lift us from the bric a brac contingent into legend and the tribal ardor. Sumatra is but a breath away. I see my cat, myself dual in the cat's eyes. I see myself dual in the cat's languorous, wild blue yonder eyes. 
as if he swallowed an entire ocean, and I'm now coming to him in waves. So I grew up in Panama, um, Central America, and uh, there's been a lot of economic um, upheaval change um, lately. In the world. The house that I grew up in was um, sold to um, drug dealers, and uh, Colombian uh, uh, drug dealers who uh, moved into the house after when the bank resold the property. And I just found out about this recently. Uh, this is uh, the place where I grew up, which I was at home, and, uh, and, and I just found that um, as very violent or something just very, um, mm -hmm. uh, it, it just really bothered me and, and it's a very funny um, experience to have that happen. So I just, I wrote a poem about it and I call it, What Remains. Night blooming jasmine trellises my dreams of childhood. It draped across the open garage like an adoration of departure. Everywhere a mantling of hills, the air a rest of distillation from myriad trees. The trilling of birds camouflaged among fleshy blooms, a botanical aquarium of hibiscus, shrimp plants, and chameleons. This house, 24 years gone into time's backward abyss, once a portal to memory's green estate is now a fortress with barbed wire and, and, fen and electric fences against intruders for a frightened woman resides. Both her dogs shot down the same patch of grass where my own dog used to play. Doesn't she know the padlock history of this place? Where tunnel walls board away the agonies performed with pliers, rope and steel and the bare bolts, cyclopic glare. The narco's deeds give in the subterranean theater of insects. There the blood singing stops in a scream heard by rats and snakes alone in the ravine where as a child I played war games with friends among mango groves and lush avocados by the stream's lacy mountains. <coughs> Comrades outside of time, my friends, who now tell of the horrors the property inherited when it was sold to men with drug capital. The woman living there is scared but blessed by Lone's mute witness. She doesn't know the secret history that will her place is surrounding this house like a burn of wood in the tropics. Every morning, a taper would squeak to her own home. I know a man shaved his face into a Francis Bacon for love. Mm -hmm. Held the mirror sideways to report his passage into the next life, where a woman is dying in his arms, her last words feathered like songs. Always someone he carries in their dying, a letter that arrived too late. The sleeping pill is not intended, but finally gone and done the trick. The semaphores of affection turned into vampire bats of woe, the moon's cold moons bearing forth the ocean's unfathomable solace, or even whales are led to shores too shallow, like angels fallen from great heights. And I'll end with this piece um, last week of the custom. There's this blueprint of a life I keep to myself, <coughs> folded neatly like a letter I will never send. <coughs> a shiv tucked close to the heart, a passport stamped by clouds and sanctified by sky, the absence I carry and will one day walk into. A blueprint for the sake that there are blueprints rising in these galaxies and breathing. This undeclared wish that the life I've lived without one has been somewhat kind and mostly beyond reproach. My hope in case of rain to find your day of sun, once there to plant a garden in our long dry bed of silence and ignite into blossom. Thank you.
with the poetry tonight. So now we'll have a 10 minute break and then uh, Britt Pond is gonna take over the MC job and we'll have a few more uh, readers and maybe do the uh, raffle. We got a ton of Yeah, we'll do the box. <laughs> Buy food, support your host. <laughs> There's a, there's an impromptu touch football game going on in front of them. Yeah. 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 Probably. Yeah. 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 Thank you. 
Catching her off the bus, tailing her around because she's not doing the right stuff. She's just kind of crazy. Yeah, I mean, that, I, that's, it would be a little bit more difficult to describe. My stuff is actually being it as its own actual Okay, everybody get their seat. We just have a few more poets tonight, and uh, then we will be on our way home. Okay. Um, first poet up will be Wendy. Hi, everyone. 
everyone. I feel blessed to be here again. It doesn't matter to me if there's two people or 50, because I just love poetry and I love the love. So, my spirit, my spirit. Um, I, I'm just going to read one poem tonight. Um, I, I was going to read a few, but um, I forgot about an important um, Sufi event that's happening tonight that happens once a year that I've missed for a few years, but I'm part of the community, so I'm going to um, sneak up to that afterward. But um, this is a poem I wrote in November, November 11th, um, and I, I didn't even have a chance to type it yet, but it's, so it's definitely um, still in editing mode, but I want to move. And it doesn't quite have a title yet, but um, it starts with a question, which maybe could be my title. What is the worth of, experience, of an experience? What is the value of intangible things? Life begins with impressions of light and sound, then presents feelings, a foundation to start. And then comes meaning. Emotions are born. Some become outlooks not meant to be worn. I've thought about hardships, every version there could be. Now sometimes they weigh so much they get the best of you and me. Fears bring shudders with many a scare. Disappointments yield their tears. And when not known and honored, anger's conflicts loom too near. But I've also seen life's goodness something bigger in the air that somehow wraps around us all, sustaining us through every care. While there are doorways to our souls hidden deep within our hearts, yet we get buried by life's stories with ideas that separate us from ourselves. There is no price for rage and grief, nor the narrowing of life's gain. And the worth of peace and joy can ne'er be measured by any means. Things are things. We swap and guess our next pursuit of happiness. But the substance of experience is what we have, worth everything. I can't touch experience with my hands or make it come or go. But it will tell me what I need to know. It will take me to myself and what is true. And maybe it will pave the way to connect what's me with what is me. Mm -hmm. okay. You walk the dog, 
and your daughter speaks into her own hands on her knees at night. Now you are a part of that mystery, of that hidden place between the fingers of your daughter's hands, and underneath the pavement on your city block. Amiri, you fought with hand and soul, with pen and art for the freedom of your people, as your poetry imparts, may you find peace, may you find rest in the hidden places of our souls, in the hidden places of our hearts. <laughs> These are two I wrote this week, just on the sky. A starless night. The night is starless. Fog clouds disintegrate in twilight rain, yet remnants of their veil displace the constellations. Lighted boxes pile themselves on city streets in random disarray as hours march by each box extinguishes itself and disappears. The dawn. The dawn arrived with pointed fingers, emerging from the golden red mound radiating from beneath my window pane. Fingers slicing at the lazy sky raised a chorus of birds to clamor at the day, knowing full well their screaming wakes the golden sun. The Call for Freedom. I think you're aware that he has been incarcerated since February 6, 1976, uh, for standing up for indigenous peoples for Indian rights. And then he was illegally extradited from Canada, and it's been 38 years, so nearly four decades. Born in North Dakota, 1944, child of Amshinaba and Lakota, rooted in the Sioux Nation, part of its soil and spirit, part of the struggle for its people, part of the struggle for its land to remain free of industry, free of the railroad, true to the treaty won by Chief Red Cloud, honoring the Great Sioux Reservation as Lakota homeland in the sacred Black Hills, home of the Sioux for perpetuity, home of communal lands, home of the Lakota and Anishinaabe, to be devastated by the surge westward, to be devastated by the violation of treaties, to be defended by its people, children of the land, who would face down US troops killing the Lakota, tribes who would insist on peace and justice when missionaries and mining companies flooded the Lakota land, destroying its sacred plains, when a president legitimized the rape of the land and became immortalized in stone on Mount Rushmore, sacred mountain of the Lakota, sacred mountain dripping blood, the massacre at Wounded Knee, 300 killed by U.S. military, a final betrayal opening the land to thievery and destruction by monsters digesting oil and diamonds, gold and water, Monsters that sang in the nursery of Leonard Peltier, the song of blood and anguish, becoming its litany for liberty. Leonard, you now languish nearly four decades in prison for deeds that would be justified, but of which you were innocent. There is no blood on your hands, and yet you languish still and call still for the freedom of your people. May you be freed today to call again for freedom, freedom of the land, freedom of the people, freedom of the Sioux to live in freedom. Here, 
but I know you ain't. <laughs> you may live for beers and for doobies when you were just a little hoe, but now you're living it up with diamonds and rubies, and the rich boys, they're feeding you snow. What are you doing? How have you been? Never forget me, because I broke you in. You are no angel, and I am no saint. You say you're a virgin, but I know you ain't. <laughs> 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 On the righteous side, the heroes are always our guides, patriotically well defended by God and national pride. We're the only ones we believe who grieve whenever we combat and die. With each carefully counted, next of kin officially notified, folded flag triangle style, three volley salute, new death certificate file. Meanwhile, Orphans, mothers, and wives mourn no more here than on the other side, over lands of jungle and sand to places where the sun doesn't shine. The loss and pain affects us all the same through concrete desert or tropical rain. Whether military blessed or white shroud dressed, the result is the same. When bullets strike flesh, when bombs leave fighters one or two limbs less? Does anyone ever really win a war when hearts are broken and bereft right and left of the enemy line? Too many end up dying when everyone keeps trying to claim the righteous. Stoop to roof, it's very clear that repairs are needed in various areas of this house, top to bottom and front to rear. The floorboard creaks, plaster's crumbling, it's drafty, broken glass, and the ceiling leaks. But on days when the rain drops, staccato pops like it's brewing coffee grains, a moment with a steaming cup when I can lay hearing nothing but nature and city sounds muffled by double pain. A moment or two savored before thoughts intrude. A moment borrowed and stolen away from all the things to do today that may or may not get done, but will have to wait until I hear the last drop percolate, listening to the soothing refrain of a windowsill concerto in the key of late night rain. Oh. And now we come to the end of our evening where we have some fantastic prizes here. Uh, books. <laughs> um, but they are probably enough for everybody here. Um, so maybe we'd rather than do the numbers, we just, everybody would just leave here and have people come in. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Here, we got a key change flash. Here, we got a and, 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 and also, for, and for anyone who's going to be here next week, we have the mini feature. Who would like to be the mini feature next week? I would. Week? 
All right. All right. And you will be here. I'll be here. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. How are you? 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 How you? How are you? How you? How that was good. I enjoyed here. That was very humorous and very nice. And very very light. I learned that you read the. So she's good. Yeah. 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 No, because see, the ritual was not performed, so we're so well trained by police Oh,